Did you guys ever, after watching Toy Story, ever try to catch your toys? Yes! Yeah. Yes, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, legit. I'm like, <laughs> I would like lay things over them. I'm like, see if it moves, like yeah. to make sure I'm like. Are things really inanimate? You're telling me you're just a toy? Is that what you're telling me, for real? And just like. <laughs> so I'll watch. I'll, I'm going I'm to catch you slipping one of these days. One of these days, I don't know when. But oh, you're still checking. I'm still I, this checking. was just when I was a kid. No, I'm still checking. Oh, you're okay. I believe it. That's Do you guys like? See? All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> That's right. Really quick. <laughs> Do you guys not see how they have those like little Toy Story characters set up on cars? Have you guys ever seen that? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh my God, it makes me believe. Like it's like maybe they do do something. Like. <laughs> Keep the child and make the live. One day I'll catch him. But, okay. You gotta catch your mom. You, so you, you still have that notion in your head. If one moved, what would you do? Would you freak? I would freak out if a toy was I like, would literally, hey. I would, I wouldn't tell anybody because I want to keep that trust. You, know? you wouldn't tell I want to keep trust. saying Oh, okay. You want to, okay. That like, I want to keep, like, I want to watch a toy, like, move. Like, maybe, like, a millimeter. And I'd be like, I saw you. I'm I would freak just, out. Just, just come to life. You just see it like it. take a breath. You're like, oh, I saw. I that. knew it. You know, I wouldn't tell anybody. I'm like, I'm gonna keep this trust we have. Well, then I wouldn't. Tr- I wouldn't be able to go to sleep anymore. I'm like, so I definitely know you're moving. And like, what are you doing? I never thought that far. That's what I'm scared of. Have you seen Indians in the Cupboard? No. It's a very old movie about toys coming yeah. to life. It is a scary movie. It to me. Sounds it's like scary. it's made to be a kids movie, but I'm like it's terrifying. Didn't don't they, they like, like try and kill the kids? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, they try to. No, that's that's small soldiers. Oh, okay. Small soldiers. They do try. I don't think that's supposed to be a kids movie because they're legitimately terrifying. trying. To, no, no, there's there's an adult. <laughs> they're like <laughs> army guys that are trying to kill people. It's it's actually a great great movie. What's it called? Toy soldiers. Toy soldiers. Yeah. And Toy what about Indian? Indian in the cupboard. In the cupboard. That's like a kids movie. It's like supposed to be adventurous, but I'm like. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's why I'm like, if my toys come to life, I'm throwing every toy that I own and it's going outside. Yeah, I never thought about that. Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the Cover Level <laughs> Podcast. Literally a six minute intro. <laughs> I'm Maddie, and I'm here with Brandon, Sam, Sadia, Sadia, and we're, today we are talking about haircuts. I don't know why, but I just looked up a ton of haircut stories, so it's gonna be a fun time. I just would like to say, because I didn't know this until right now, um, me and Sam share the same barber. Oh. Small world. Are you guys cool with talking about, because I don't know my hairstylist at all, so I could potentially talk about her. Do you even but, talk to her? Like when you get your no, hair? No, I've only just gotten my hair done with her once. So. Do you, because we have, relationship with barbers are like very specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I have a brother, I know. And they're like, you could potentially anger them, and you don't want to get on their bad side. You kind of feel scared to tell them the truth about yeah. things. Oh, so you guys are probably going to hold back this episode <laughs> if you had anything to say. You're not going to say it. I mean, I got old barbers, so I could put them. Yeah, out he's never going to watch this. He'll never see this. But there's people that we know that watch this that know him, oh, and they yeah. might want to start some stuff. Who knows? Well, we might have to do that. I'm, if it happens, I'm going to say it. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. gonna say it. Okay. Right. Let's, let's run the story. I'm ready. I'm name. ready. I'm gonna say his full name. <laughs> and, I'm gonna say his business. And his barbershop. I'm gonna say everything. And the address, because I somehow memorized that. I don't know the address. I, I was bluffing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's start off with this one. Yay. Am I the asshole for only going to black salons? Do you think this is a white person saying this? I'll give you that, yeah. It has to be a white person. It's a white person. person. See, this is how you know that she's white. She says, hi there. Oh. This is my first (laughs) post. (laughs) This is my first post, and this is a throwaway. I'm a 30-year-old white woman with thick, curly brown hair. 3C, if you know what that means. Oh. I have always struggled with my hair and was adopted into a family of people with straight hair who couldn't care for my hair, properly leading to huge knots and regularly getting my hair massacred by scissors to make it short to be easier to deal with. Wow. 
When I went to uni, I met my best friend who was black and has a similar hair type to me. And when noticing my struggle helped me out, she showed me products from brands intended for black people that really help with my hair quality and even took me to a salon she went to that catered for black hair types. My hair has been amazing ever since. They've been the only people to understand how to care for my hair and make it look nice. Well, onto the actual argument. Me and some friends from work went out for dinner and we were talking about our hair and I commented that I go to a salon that specializes in black hair care. One of the women, also white, commented that it was inappropriate for me as a white woman to take advantage of black products and services that should only be used by black people. When I asked why, she said that it's kind of cultural appropriation. The others agreed, and I felt uncomfortable ever since. I don't know if she's right and if I'm wrong. I don't even know what I would do if I was wrong. I don't want to go back to the salons that butchered my hair before. It sounds like her friends don't know what cultural appropriation means. I feel like if she has been to salons, like, say, predominantly white salons, and they mess up your hair every time, yeah, I'm going to find somebody that can do my hair because I'm not going to pay you money. I get up out this chair, and I'm scared to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Like, why waste the money? So you know what? Listening to the story, getting a little inside scoop. (laughs) Since she does have, like, a kinkier, like, curlier, not kinkier, curlier hair texture, Uh and she has gone to black salons where they are quite literally the only people that won't butcher her hair, then yeah, I girl, that's not co- cultural appropriation. That's doing what's best for you. Girl, get your hair done, get it slayed and laid, and keep it pushing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. And it's always white people who will be trying to, like, scream cultural appropriation, I think. Like, they would be trying to stick up, like, I'm mm-hmm. sticking up for black people. You're taking their, like, no, she's giving money into a black business mm-hmm. who... They want money as well. If they're doing it, there's no problem. I don't see the issue. I think it's like a weird thing where white people are trying to be so sensitive about everything that they will be like, oh, you're doing something that is intended for black people, but you're white? That's a problem because they don't understand where the problem is. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, anything is a problem. I feel like white people can be very sensitive to the things that aren't really like racist yeah. or like cultural appropriation. Like girl, she's just trying to get her hair done. She just want to get her hair done and, and walk out and look cute and feel cute. Mm-hmm. She's not trying to appropriate. Right. She just want to get her hair done. Like that's what, that's what I mean. And you can tell she, like she did her research cause she knew the, the, the curl type. So it's like, she knows what she she's talking about. She said like, three she's like, <laughs> she's, she knew like, okay, this is what I, I'm dealing with right now. Mm-hmm. And then to your point, it's just like the white friends are just like, yeah, you're being, you're, you're cult- culturally appropriating this. And it's like, no, she's just getting her hair done. Like, mm-hmm. she's done the research. She knows exactly what she needs to be done. They don't. Where else are you going to go? <laughs> no, I think you guys are definitely right. I've had moments in my past where I've been overly sensitive because I didn't understand. And I'm sure I'll have moments in the future. But I think... Sadia like hit it right on the head where you're just not aware of what the problem is so you're just like hey whoa mm-hmm. yeah because yeah. I've seen even like even with like people being over overly sensitive for gay people they're like I have to say this thing to protect gay people and gay people are like no that's fine you're like doing the most with what I'm saying you're <laughs> mm-hmm. like okay so I say it all the time if you're like you're not that marginalized group and you feel like I have to stick up and be a warrior for everything you're like mm-hmm. some things are like egregious you know yeah. I'm like okay that's bad yeah. but most things are like it's fine it's mm-hmm. not an issue mm-hmm. yeah okay next story but she is racist for going to that black salon oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay I'll add that in <laughs> am I the asshole for asking to be charged for a man's haircut when I am a woman y'all haircuts be expensive man yeah nah your haircuts are expensive. So yeah, how much are your haircuts? Girl, th- girl, you think I cut my hair? She don't cut her hair. You think I cut this well, hair? Well, when you've gotten your hair. Okay, when before. I've gotten haircuts, listen. Mm. When I've gotten haircuts, it's a shame. It actually really is a shame. <laughs> is it? It is actually, for to get my hair cut in style, when it was like just loose natural, when I was a loose natural, I would never leave the salon without spending at least $80. Without the tip. That's the last, yep. That's well, with my re- most recent one, it was like $60, but I by the end of the time I left, it was like 80 because I'm yeah. like, 
this is my first time meeting you. I'm trying to have a good relationship. That's so expensive. Bad. And then I, I bought products outside of it. You brought products too? Well, not there, but she told me like what products to buy like for my yeah. hair. And so I, pro I can't even tell you how much the products are. She's like, I know it's expensive, but you'll probably use it within the month. Dollars. Instead of like once a week, because like she's like, you're gonna have to use like a lot of the product, and I'm like, okay. It is come literally on. crazy. It's going so to the much. salon. That's why I got that right there is why part of the reason I got locks because it just got to be between the hair products, the hair styling, haircuts, whatever. It was so expensive, and my brother was like, yeah, I just, man, these barbershop prices they going crazy. I I'm, um, I, it was like twenty five bucks. I was like. No, they are because I'm like, if you go, <laughs> I get it. Get it. Compared, oh, compared, to, compared to that, yes, it's crazy. But we started off like, I was getting $8, $10 haircuts. That's true. Now they're $30. Now I'm like, yeah. inflation and, that crazy? And listen, listen, listen. <laughs> you guys go like every six months. We go every other week. There's some girls that go, I'm going every six weeks now. Okay, when my hair was short, like I had a pixie cut, I was going to that salon every two to three weeks. Oh my. Pixie cuts are different. But like, yeah. bro, <laughs> <laughs> like, this goes away after a week, mm -hmm. and after two weeks, your boy start looking crazy. And you, you gotta tell me every two weeks I gotta pay. Don't let me get a brush cut. It's every week, thirty dollars every week, cause my hair grows back that fast that my brush cut would just be gone. Like I would have waves going crazy for like two days, crazy. and then have an afro. <laughs> the next week and I'm like, bro, this is ridiculous. Thirty dollars does seem like a lot. I feel like the last time I talked to you about a haircut it was like twenty. It was twenty. Yes. And then it seemed like in the last couple of years it just jumped up. <laughs> At the barbershop. <laughs> Did, were you there were you going there like before January? Yeah. He he had the at a barbershop he put a sign and it said all prices will be going up. And I was I looked at it and I was just like I don't know how much I can take no more. <laughs> COVID going crazy. Now the hair prices are going up. Man, this is crazy. My brother got a $15 line up. 15? Where's he going? A line up. I don't even know where he went. But he came home and was like, I just paid $15 for a line up. I was like, man, you got gypped. I, I, don't, think, I don't think anybody would. $15 for a line up? How long does that take to do? Like five minutes? Ten minutes? Ten minutes? Yeah, five, ten minutes. Yeah, five, ten minutes. All you gotta do is make it all look all symmetrical. It's not even including the fade? No. no just the line. Yeah, just the line. Just the line up. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. And that's why I'm like, Ooh. he's going every two weeks. I'm like, I'm just gonna work on my personality and just look crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going once a month usually because I'm like, I can't afford to be going. How can you encourage people to tip? Like, like yeah. I feel like as a consumer, if I'm paying fifteen dollars for a lineup, do you think I want to give you a tip? You got a tip. Well, I'm just being real. Like you do have to tip. I was. You got a tip. But as a consumer, would you want to? Mm -hmm. I just pay fifteen dollars, one five American dollars. I, I'll drop you another dollar for a tip. I'm like one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> because put this in half of job? that lineup money is your tip. No, that's what, that's what in, I'm my head, in my head, I'm that's like, what I'm saying. In my head, I'm like, this lineup's actually seven bucks. This you get an eight dollar tip. You get an eight dollar tip on this. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Nuts. That's nuts. That's nuts. So is she the asshole for trying no. to be charged? Try to get yeah, yeah. equality. Try to get the, that the, money the, down. I think pink tax is real. Like, if oh, you're yeah. getting the same, like if this is the same cut as a man would get. Oh yeah, I guess it depends. You know, Be well. So do it you, if it's do you think the styling of a woman's hair should be twice as much, like a general styling and cutting? I think it depends on the length. Mm -hmm. Like when my hair was to the middle of my back, I have really thick hair. I can understand why it's a lot of money, because especially like there was a point where I was paying like a hundred and thirty, but that was including bleaching and like toner and stuff. I'm like, I totally get why you are charging me this much money to do this to my hair. Like, I feel bad for your fingertips. Like, do whatever you need to do. I will pay this money for you to do yeah. this. But um, if it's shorter hair, I don't understand yeah, why it's... Yeah, she's getting a brush cut. Yeah, it should just be If she's getting the same cut as a guy with yeah, it, like... Yeah, 100% should be the same. It should be the upper. Yeah. No, that's crazy. I see it. Am I the asshole for asking to be charged for a man's haircut when I'm a woman? For the past 12 years, I have had a short men's style haircut. I'm not talking about a pixie cut that requires a lot of styling and time. My sides are buzzed fairly short with the top a bit longer. 
It usually only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for me to get a haircut. During the time, during that time, every salon I've gone to has charged me for a full price women's cut. This has always annoyed me. I don't enjoy paying almost double what men with the exact same haircut as me pay. Recently, I moved and yesterday I went to a new shop for my monthly trim and I decided to try something new. I asked if I could be charged the $22 for a men's haircut rather than 40 for a women's cut. The woman at the counter lo looked like I slapped her. She called a manager and a stylist over and they seemed shocked by the suggestion. They talked about it amongst, amongst themselves and they told me that it wasn't possible. I pushed back and explained my reasoning and all they said was that they don't charge by style. 12 years of frustration boiled over and I, and I ended up leaving. I was never rude or mean, but I still feel bad that I wasted a stylist appointment. Am I the asshole for asking, leaving, being annoyed at what I see as a double standard? I thought about going to a barber, but I live in a conservative part of the country and I worry about a negative reaction there and every salon I've ever gone to explicitly caters to men as well. She's not the asshole. The salon is the yeah, asshole. Yeah, they don't charge by style. Yeah, oh, that's, that's literally that's saying crazy. we discriminate against yeah. gender. Come on in. What? That's exactly the pink tax, like right there. That is the completely. definition of a pink tax. That's so crazy. Oh, because you're a woman, you just pay more. <laughs> that's nuts. Two thumbs down. That does but not I think pass she the vibe check. I think she should go to the barber, like, you know, being afraid, whatever. You're going to have the freshest fade you will ever receive if you go to that barber, I swear to you. Honestly, yeah, I feel like our so barber, I... he'll cut anybody. <laughs> he'll cut anybody. I'll be seeing some of the people coming after him, like, she should cuts. go to a black salon. Like, yeah, that's she what She should go to the same one from the first story. They'll take her. <laughs> they'll, take, <laughs> they'll take you. <laughs> they'll take her in. Because I'm pretty sure she's probably going to white salons. I feel like salons, though, they always, they can make that, like, the atmosphere so, I don't know how to explain it. Like, like not welcoming? Not, well, very much not welcoming. Like, That's why like I feel like you need to go to, like, better a, than you. you need to go to, like, a beauty shop or, like, a barbershop. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Queen Rather Latifah, than a salon. Right? You know yeah. What I'm yeah. Right. Sometimes right. salons just make they you feel it. like they're, like, higher than you. Yeah. So it's like, oh, hey, we're here to help you because mm -hmm. you need help. Come well, on, girl. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, I know you're going to talk about me when I leave. I know you are. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Is she going to a place that, because she did mention, she was like, oh, they do serve guys too, but like, do all the places she went to only serve women? Yeah. Okay, that could be. But I'm like, the ones that serve guys too, that's like crazy, where you're like, I yeah, they serve we have a man one and we have a woman. That's the prices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I I'm like, if a guy with long hair came in, he gets the man price? Or does he get the? Because they charge. They don't charge. They charge, charge the style. Yeah. <sighs> that was a good point. Pink tax. They're like, pull your pants on. Are you a man or a woman? Let and me then, see it. And then like, That's <laughs> no, the price you I'm pay. I'm a man, bro. You have a mustache. <laughs> no, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what this has to do with haircuts, but. Mm. Um, well, you picked the story, right? Yeah, but, you know, I just use keywords and then I go to the most popular ones. <laughs> go from <so>. there. <laughs> Am I the asshole for celebrating my birthday, which is the one-year anniversary of my nephew's death? Wait, say it again? <laughs> I'm sorry. <buddy. laughs> Am I the asshole for celebrating my birthday, which is the one-year anniversary of my nephew's death? No. <laughs> Stop laughing. I swear to God, it's just because of what we just talked about and how does that have anything to do with haircuts? It's not the actual title. <laughs> oh my God. That's such a stark contrast. I know, which is why I'm like, I don't know what we're about to read. It's probably going to say like one thing about a haircut, honestly. I would say no because it was your birthday first. <laughs> I'm just trying to read it really quick. Before Is it haircut they... anywhere? Haircut? I think you have to read it. I would <laughs> say no, because if you, you die for the haircut, that's your fault. What does it have to do with the haircut? They died in a haircutting accident. <laughs> yeah, that's his fault. He should, yeah. He should okay, that's not hair. funny, because I'm reading how he died. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody get it together. I don't see anything about a haircut. Get it together. I don't see anything about a haircut in here, but okay. I already said the title. Okay, so. yeah, you gotta do it. 
Am I the asshole for celebrating <laughs> my birthday, which is the one year anniversary of my nephew's death? My 25 female nephew, four male, passed away one year ago because of cancer. It was right on my birthday and there was no celebration. There was nothing because everybody was devastated. My sister, Denise, is still grieving. She's in therapy and making some progress, but it's been slow. My family and I try to be as supportive as possible. Birthdays in my family are very important. We throw huge parties. I believe we have been taught that birthdays are important and should be cherished. Yesterday was my birthday. Obviously, I felt bad about the anniversary of my nephew's death, but I was also a little down about not being able to celebrate like I used to, and my girlfriend knew that. In the morning, I went to Denise's house, stayed by her side until almost lunchtime. When my mother would stay with her, we didn't want to leave her alone, but no one could stay all day. I went to work, and at night, my girlfriend made a surprise at home with a candlelight dinner and a small cake. Something very intimate and for both of us, since my family was in a bad way. I didn't post on social media, but my girlfriend posted a picture of us holding hands in the dinner and she made with a happy B-Day love. My mom and Denise follow her on Instagram. I woke up the next day to hundreds of texts from my mom and Denise asking if I was celebrating, even though it was such a sad day and how heartless I was to celebrate knowing my sister was in such a bad way. Even though I said it was a surprise, they called me cold, heartless, and insensitive to the pain of others, saying I should have refused to celebrate. I was just glad I celebrated because it's something important to me, and I didn't even realize when my girlfriend posted this photo on Instagram. By the way, in case you're wondering, none of them remembered it was my birthday. Am I the asshole? Girl, you need a hug. You're not the asshole. <sighs> yeah. Wait, how old did she turn? I don't know. 25? Um, I just know, she just said that birthdays are really important. Cause she, well, 25. How, yeah, she turned 25. Yeah. That's actually pretty horrible. That yeah. is actually pretty horrible. Now she's the asshole. She you is? She said she's the asshole? Yeah. Why is she, tell me why she's the asshole, Sam. I can't remember what comedian said this, but I agree with him. Like, there's only certain birthdays people should be celebrating. <laughs> One through ten, give them a birthday party, celebrate it. Thirteen, that's a milestone. Eighteen, it's a good one. Twenty-one. But then after that, 30, 40, 50, 60, <laughs> um, none of those middle ones matter at all. So I'm like, oh, you need to celebrate your birthday. You're turning 25, <laughs> who cares? 25 is a big one. No, it's not. What's big about it? Halfway to dirty 30. Right. No, it's not, it's not anything. 25 is nothing. 30-something. 40-something. I'll remember that. Sam. You've been canceled. How old are you, Sam? Thirty-two. Oh, you already hit thirty-three. Yep, I wouldn't even celebrate anything. I didn't celebrate thirty-one. I didn't celebrate thirty-two. We 30, celebrated thirty thirty though. Dirty thirty. I did celebrate thirty. We celebrated for you on the podcast. Remember? His eyes got so big that was actually really scary to watch. <laughs> 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 that was actually terrifying. Well, even if then, even that might be extreme. No, I can't say she's really the asshole because he died. You, I can't celebrate my birthday now every year because he died on my birthday. Grief is such a complicated emotion. I feel really bad for her because, like, the person died on her birthday. Like, that already sucks. And obviously, you're not going to celebrate your own birthday because someone that you love just died. Last year, she didn't get to celebrate her birthday. There are 365 Ooh. days in a year. You telling me I can't get one day? I can't get one day. If this is such a complicated situation because he did pass on her birthday. I feel like if I were her family, what I would do was just acknowledge that he did die, but in a different way. Maybe we can do something, you know, a day before, like a memorial or a tribute or whatever to honor him because, yes, he did die. But... Just as you guys are trying to honor the dead that he passed and acknowledged in his memory, you still need to honor the living. How are you going to say as a person, oh, someone significant in your life died on your birthday? Your birthday's done. Done. No more. Right. You don't get to celebrate. You don't get to be happy. You don't get to celebrate your own life. None of that. Don't do any of that. You know why? Because someone died that day. Someone died every day. Not to make his death insignificant. But death is something that is a part of life. He died tragically, and I totally understand that. That family should completely take the time to honor his memory, cherish his life, the life that he did have. But someone is living right now, 
alive right now, trying to celebrate her birthday right now. She didn't get to celebrate the year before. She can't celebrate this year because everybody else is sad. Who don't want to celebrate on their birthday? That was a great take. I love Who that. doesn't want to celebrate on their birthday? You're boring, so you don't count. <laughs> but everybody else wants to celebrate on their birthday. That you was, know what I'm saying? wow. No, we no gotta, that was everything. Yeah, let's, let's, let's clap that one that. up. Clap. Clap, Sam. Okay. Harder. <laughs> Thank you. Not too hard now. Don't beat the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, um, so my cousin, my grandpa, and I, we have a birthday in the same week. Like It's like my cousin, my grandpa, and then me. And um, my grandpa died. And uh, we, uh, I remember the first like year it happened, instead of, instead of, um, you know, being grateful and stuff like that. We, it was like the first year we like actually got together and like had like a, a well not the first year, but like one of the years we got together. Cause like, you know, family stuff, it gets complicated. And like times, schedules don't match up necessarily. But it was like one of the first times. And I think we even started celebrating our other cousin that's born in like early August. <laughs> we were just like, hey, you know what? It's just gonna be a birthday bash for everybody. And we're just gonna remember all the good times we had with him, but also, you know, celebrate that there's three birthdays in this week. Like, this is it's crazy. And it was, it was like, really, it was really fun and heartwarming. And uh, I just don't understand why they couldn't just do that. Like, even though it's a sad occasion, yes. Like, if you let the grief continue to be grief, it'll always be grief. Like, you have to make that choice to, like, actively put yourself in, okay. I'm grieving, but like now let's just try to turn into something happy instead of like, like I mean, pastors try to do it. It's kind of forced, but like they're like, don't worry about them being dead. Let's celebrate their life. It's like you could you could do that now after a year at least. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> celebrate the life, and to to Dia's point, celebrate the life that's there. Like you don't have to make it a grand, grand sad moment. Like just. Yeah, it was a short time, but it was a good time. And even, it sounded like that's kind of what they did, is like, in the morning, she was there for her sister. Mm -hmm. Wasn't, you know, letting them know anything about a birthday. She didn't even know. She wasn't planning on celebrate. Mm -hmm. celebrate. Well, I don't know if it's a girl, but they didn't even know they were, they weren't going to celebrate. And then her, their girlfriend, you know, does this really nice thing for them, knowing that it's an important day. And somehow it's her fault that somebody wanted to celebrate her. Like, I just feel I feel really bad for her because especially since she's they said that birthdays were a really big thing in their family. I really just don't know how you can tell someone tell they go. Their partner did something for them because they weren't going to do anything. So that in and of itself, I, at least for me, would cause a lot of pain. Like I would be hurt by that. Like my I'm trying to you guys won't celebrate me. So I'm celebrating myself. And in celebrating myself, I still get backlash from you because you didn't celebrate me. Now I have to do it by myself. But now that I did it by myself, you're mad at me because I'm happy. Trying to make you feel bad. Like, trying to make you feel bad. Right. Yeah. That's so messed up. And like, you can't even, like, rule it out. Like, oh, yeah, that's a toxic family. Like, <laughs> I wonder if, like, when you post this on TikTok, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, she's, that's a toxic family or something like that. Because it's like... and what makes it complicated is that there's still grieving like she they said that she literally no one left her side that day mm -hmm. so it's like you know grief will make you do some crazy things and it's like dang you can't necessarily rule out that like they're for, they're the a-hole mm -hmm. like because they're grieving mm -hmm. i guess my only thing that i always get mad about is like, I think everyone can handle grief however they want to handle grief. Like, if you want to be sad for a day or a year or ten years, that's on you. But we try to litigate how other people should feel based on something. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You don't know how they get through things. You don't know how they handle things. They, their grief might look differently than yours. So I'm like, going over here and saying, you can't do this because this happened. I'm like, that's your relationship with the grief. That's not my relationship with the grief. We don't all have to be the same way. Because mm -hmm. I'm not like, I know when I'm dying, I'm gonna be like, hey, y'all can do whatever. I'm just a body, throw me in a box, go over there, be happy, party. You ain't gotta be sad. I mean, people be sad because I'm one of the greatest people. Well, has I that would been say proven? So. You my cousin. 
No, Sam. I, I, Sam, you, <laughs> Sam, you my cousin. I thought I would just get agreement and nothing. I always like to mess with you, Sam. Yeah. I, I think you are pretty great, though. Thank you. You are pretty great. The greatest. So That's when I die, just be. If you, when you die, I would say, Sam was pretty great. He was. That's all I'm actually and looking then, for. And then I'll show like the pictures from the cruise. <laughs> Like, this dude's so great, you want to carry over. Just him, like, dancing. Him with the <laughs> Tina Turner wig. Tina Turner yeah. wig. Just ripping his clothes off. It's just like crooked at this point because yeah. he's just wilding out. Well, thank you for joining us on this podcast, course, Adia. I, podcast I need you to so clip her saying that I'm a great person and just send that Don't to me. Do that. Kind Don't of mislead form. these okay. people. That'll be your birthday gift on your 40th yeah, birthday. Yeah, that's all I need. On his 40th. Yeah, because that's the next one I'm celebrating. That's You don't celebrate in between, for real? No. I think they're pointless and dumb. I was Bye. No, <laughs> <I'm coming laughs> See ya. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>